Opera. What's it all about? Well, it's about love, passion, revenge, murder, jealousy, betrayal, forgiveness. Big human passions and emotions that we all experience. It's set in this highly amplified world of surging orchestral music and incredible singing, costume sets. It really is the most inclusive and exciting art form of them all. And it is for that reason that I decided the first of my easy guides is going to be opera. Opera originated in Italy in 1594 when Giacomo Perry came up with the idea of writing a drama which went from beginning to end without any talking. He even the dialogue was set to music. We call this recitative. Perry is now remembered for having written the first opera. It was called Euridice and it survives even to this day. But the first great opera was when Claudio Mondavelli was commissioned by the Duke of Mantua in Italy to write a work for the stage. It is a masterpiece and he called it Orfeo. And when it comes to discussing the history of opera, this is where it truly starts with Mondavelli's Orfeo. The next great big name in opera was George Frederick Handel, a German who settled in England and became really well known for writing operas. Ronaldo, Xerxes, they all had these lofty names and that's because they were all on lofty themes. They were about legendary figures, not mortal. They were gods and nymphs and shepherds. Handel was a great impresario and he utilized the megastars of their day, the castrati, to perform his glorious works. But opera took off to a whole new level with the arrival of a certain prodigy in Salzburg, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Now he was so clever that he wrote his first opera when he was 11. And yes, it was based on one of those lofty themes. In 1786, he came up with the idea of setting to music Beaumarchais' Upstairs Downstairs Comedy, The Marriage of Figaro. It was about real people living in a big house in Seville, a count and his wife, and all the servants, and all the intrigue. It was about interpersonal relationships. It also is highly, highly amusing. <laughs> Grazie, signore. So this departure was extremely important in the history of opera because everything went in a different direction. Mozart went on to compose three marvelous operas Cosy from Tutte, Don Giovanni, and the last one, The Magic Flute. And he died a month after completing that at the age of just 36. The next towering figure in the history of opera is Giuseppe Verdi. Verdi was the opposite to Mozart. He had a long, fruitful life, and Verdi's music during his lifetime became a symbol for Italian unity. One of his highly successful operas was about the Duke of Mantua and we met him in 1607 when he commissioned Orfeo from Monteverdi. Rigoletto is a masterpiece full of amazing melodies, amazing tunes, a dark melodrama set in the back streets of Italy with all sorts of plotting and disastrous consequences. Have you noticed all of these operas seem to be in Italian, and opera is a very Italian art form. The word opera actually means work in Italian, and it refers to the fact that this work combines music and drama and dance and the visual arts. But if I had to choose three operas that are not in Italian, the first would be Dido and Aeneas written by Henry Purcell and undoubtedly the first most important opera in English. It was written in 1688 and it features one of the most glorious pieces of music. It is Dido's Lament which she sings at the end of the opera having just taken poison. The other non-Italian opera that I've chosen is Carmen, written in 
1875 by Georges Bizet and it, it features the most wonderful music. Who can ever forget the Habanera sung by Carmen, a local girl from the cigarette factory. And the third opera that I've chosen, which is not in Italian, is Tristan und Isolde. That epic masterpiece by Richard Wagner. It is a monumental work. It goes on for so long. It is huge, incredibly exciting, wonderful music. But the last scene, when his older sings over the dead body of Tristan, her famous legal school, is something you will never forget as you go. We're going to end this easy guide to opera with another Italian, Giacomo Puccini. He had this enormous early success. He wrote three mega hit operas in a row, La Boheme, Tosca and Madame Butterfly. He became super wealthy, so he and his wife Elvina bought a villa next to the Lake Massachusetts in Torre del Lago, Tuscany. And there he indulged his passion for hunting, shooting, fishing, hanging out with his friends, drinking wine, and generally getting into trouble. And what better way to end this easy guide to opera than by a Puccini aria. Not just any aria, the world's most famous, most loved aria. This comes from Turandot, Puccini's unfinished masterpiece. It is Nessun Dorma, sung by Luciano Pavarotti. Yeah.